Um, I'm Gwen, if you don't know me, and I help ambitious women ditch debt and create fun and sexy money plans. Doesn't that sound fun? It's literally putting fun back into money talk, back into finance talk. Because I don't know about you, but I grew up thinking that finances were just not fun, that they had to be hard, that they had to be, you know, difficult conversations. And to be honest with you, because I thought that, they were that. <laughs> but just last year, we have turned that around. Um, and tonight, I want to talk about one of the most basic money skills that 90% of people get wrong. Okay. What we're looking at is your income and your expenses. And so I know what you're thinking. You're like, how can 90% of people get this wrong when most people have jobs, they have an income, most people have expenses. So how are 90% of people getting this wrong? Well, okay. So I want you to visualize this. If you took your income for one month and then you subtracted all your expenses for one month, what would you be left with? <laughs> we would like to be left with what we call a gap, right? This significant amount of money that's left over after you've got all your income coming in and all your expenses going out, what we would like to have is a gap. What most people have <laughs> is that their uh, expenses outweigh their income. And this actually happens month after month after month. And because finances have been hard or they think they're hard or they already know what kind of situation they're in and they just don't wanna face it. They don't look at their bank account. They don't look at their income. Maybe they do, but they don't look at their expenses for sure. And they're certainly not going in there and like diving in and figuring it out. Most people are not necessarily in the red where their expenses outweigh their income. Most people are in the yellow. So if you can imagine a traffic light, right? You are in the green. If your income minus your, minus your expenses gives you a gap of money at the end of the month, if you have extra money left over, you are in the green. Hallelujah, only 10% of people get there <laughs> are doing that correctly, okay? Hey, Erica, if your expenses outweigh your income, you are at a stop, you're at a halt, that is a red light, you are not passing go. <laughs> Most people, about 90% of people, are in the yellow where they're just breaking even, right? And that process starts over and over and over again. And when you're in the yellow, that's what I like to say, or that's where I like to say, that your check engine light is on. <laughs> because your check engine light is like, yoo -hoo, hey, something's wrong, this is not normal. I'm going to combust if you ignore me. <laughs> so pay attention to me. But here's the thing, <clears throat> there's two kinds of people in this world. <laughs> there are people who will drive a car with a check engine light on forever and ever and ever and ever until something goes wrong because they just don't even wanna know what the problem is. They're like, oh my God, my check engine light's on, but you know what, if I just ignore it, it'll go away. Yeah, it'll just go, it'll just turn off and then nothing will be wrong. And then the other type of person is like, okay, my check engine light's on, uh, light is on, I'm gonna take it into the shop right now, we're gonna do something about it, right? Which one are you? Are you one or are you two? Are you, I'm gonna ignore the check engine light because I don't wanna know what's wrong with my car, or are you number two, like, I have to know right now, let's fix it so that the problem doesn't get any bigger. I would like to bet most people ignore that check engine light, and I was one of those people, right? I mean, literally and figuratively, I remember I had a car in college, I think it was a Toyota Camry, I think it was the Camry that um, would sometimes just die at a stop sign. Uh, but every once in a while, it would the check engine light would come on and I'm like, you know what? It's probably fine. I don't have the money for whatever this is gonna cost me. So we're gonna pretend like there's no check engine light on right now. And that's probably why that car didn't last me very long. So I'm here to tell you that your check engine light could be on and there's a reason why it's on and we're going to look at it. Okay, we're gonna lift up the hood in your finances, we're gonna figure out what's going on. Why are you coming out and breaking even? There's a lot of reasons why this can be. 
Um, most of them is that you don't check your bank account and so, because you just don't want to know what's going on, right? And so you just keep spending while there's money in the account and then one day you just figure there's going to be zero dollars in there and then you wait for the next paycheck and you're fine again, right? But when, when, when that happens, we have that system happen over and over and over again and you never get ahead. Now, most of the time, our biggest expenses are our minimum payments that we're putting on our debt. So if you have a ton of debt, you probably are seeing a lot of your income go towards your debt every month. Dude, <laughs> that was me. That was me. And I wasn't logging into my bank account to check because I didn't want to see it. Hey, Andrew. Um, but here's the thing, okay? When we lift open the engine, the I, now I can't even think of the, the hood of the car, and we're looking under there to see what's going on. Is it possible that it's an easy fix? Yes. In fact, nine times out of 10 with my car that used to stop at stoplight, at, at stop signs and then not start again, if I had checked my check engine light, I probably could have avoided all those problems and all of those tow expenses <laughs> if I had just looked at what was going on, right? So I'm here to encourage you to look under the hood because it's usually not as bad as you think. And the only way that you can get the green light and like go ahead is for you to figure out what's going on and why it's happening, right? So we have to look under the hood. We've got to figure out why the check engine light came on and then we've got to do something about it so that it's, it turns off. So here are, here's what to do if your check engine light is on, okay? And we're talking about finances, if you haven't caught that yet. We're talking about in your bank account, if your income minus your expenses just equals out and you have no extra money left over at the end of the month. Here's what to do. Number one, don't ignore it. The check engine light comes on, you're in the yellow because you're gonna combust if you don't do anything about it. If you have one little slip up, if you have an emergency and you don't have any emergency funds to cover you, you're going to dig yourself deeper in debt, which means that if you were in the yellow, right? Like just skirting by with having enough money to cover all your expenses. Now you've got an extra debt and you're going to be in the red and we don't want you to get there. Our goal is to get to green. We want to pass go. We want to go, right? Check engine light off. <laughs> so don't ignore the check engine light. We've got to open up the hood, look underneath it. We've got to look at our income. We've got to look at our expenses. Okay. And at the same time, this is number two, but it goes with number one, because now you're not ignoring your check engine light. And now you're gonna have a conversation with yourself or, or if you're married with your spouse about needs versus wants. Because so often we just kind of like, oh, it's another subscription, it's just $4.99 a month, I'll add that on. Oh, it's Apple TV, yeah, I can do $4.99. Oh, it's Amazon Prime, $99 a year, whatever it is now. Oh, that breaks down to like nothing per month. I can do that. Um, you know, and these things just start to add on because they look small. But in the grand scheme of things, if you're in the yellow and you're just skirting by, those little tiny things start to add up. And here's a story for you, what I don't want to see happen to you. If you are like me and you ignore the check engine light and you're like, I'm just going to pay my bills and we're going to get by and, and, and I, I'm going to have money in there to cover everything. It's going to be fine. What can happen if you don't look at your expenses? and you check your account every month at the minimum, is that someone can hack into Hulu, for example, and start to charge little, little, little amounts more. So what they do is they add on a little extra charge. Like you were paying $5.99, well, they'll add on $5 in a feature, and now you're paying $9.99. It's probably so small that you don't even realize. And they'll do that for two months. And then the next month, they're going to add even more features, right? So they're using your account and adding on extra things. <laughs> well, I had three months of $150 charges on Hulu, of which I thought I was paying $5.99. But because I hadn't logged into my account and checked my account, I didn't even notice. So these are things I don't want to see happen to you. That's why you're going to check under the hood okay so have a needs versus a wants conversation and if you're in the yellow your check engine light is on it means that you need to decrease some of your expenses or make more money but usually one of the easiest ways to get ahead is to decrease those expenses first okay needs versus wants needs are things that you absolutely need in order to get by like food and heat probably right and and water and those kinds of things um, a roof over your head Wants are things like having 
all the prime channels, having cable, having Amazon, having Hulu, having Netflix, okay, those are wants. And if you're in the yellow, you've gotta cut some of your wants so that you can get ahead and not be in that same position. Your check engine light will turn off when you can get there, okay? Um, then you need to decide what you want for your future. And if you haven't thought about your future, if you're not investing yet, you don't have a money plan, you don't know what your net worth is, you don't know what amount of money you need to retire, you need to know those things. No matter how old you are, if you're here and you're 20, know those things. I wish I knew them when I was 20. If you're here and you're 50 and you don't know them, know those things. You need to know them so that you can know when you want to retire. Because hear me out, retirement doesn't have to be an age number. Okay, just because we have certain social security withdrawals and, and um, ages that we can decide to pull from retirement accounts does not mean that you have to retire at that age. You can retire whenever you want to and it's all based on your net worth. So if you know how much money you need to survive every year, you can plan your retirement for any age that you want to, okay? I did not know that. I want you to know that. So have a plan, decide what you want for your future. Um, and then start putting it into action. And if you don't know how to do that, I'm so excited. On Thursday, I'm co-teaching a free training all about all of the things that I have used to get out of my old money mindset and into a new money mindset to turn my check engine light off and go for the green, right? To increase that gap to not be living in this like, oh my God, are we gonna have enough money or just spending without looking, right? On Thursday, I'm co-teaching with the <laughs> Green Gap Mastermind, Dr. Troy. If you guys don't know him, he is who taught me how to use Green Gap in my own life. And Green Gap is what allowed us to pay down. We actually just um, went over 50K. We paid down over 50K in debt in 10 and a half months now. So. It works and on Thursday we're giving you all these tips and tools and tricks we're breaking down the green gap system and we're showing you that it's all possible so if you number one have debt and you don't know how to get ahead quickly if you haven't examined your income and expenses and you want to know how to increase that gap if you don't have a money plan you don't know how to invest or you're not investing investing yet Thursday you should be there at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time I have a special invite leak for you. If you would like it, please let me know and I will send it to you. And um, I want to see how Green Gap can change your life because it is sustainable. Every other system I had done up until now was not sustainable for me and I wasn't successful in paying down debt. This is sustainable, not only myself, but you'll hear from you'll you'll hear from others who have been going through the system for longer than I have. Someone who had paid down three hundred thousand dollars in student loan debt. What? What? Dr. Troy paid over seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars in debt down, and retired at age forty-two. Okay, this system works, and I want it for you. Here is your virtual high five to turning off your check engine light and going for green. If you'd like to join us on Thursday, I'd be happy to send you the link. I will save your spot for you. If you cannot attend live, yes, it will be recorded and you can have that recording. Belle, I will send you the link, my friend. I would be happy to see your face there. In fact, like I'm a little bit nervous about teaching because Dr. Troy is like my mentor. Um, and so it would be lovely to see some familiar faces. I would be happy to see you there, Belle. I will grab you the link. Just let me know. I love you guys. Happy Money Monday. Here's to new mindsets. Adam Stacio, you better be there. Okay, I love you. Bye.